Hello there, my dear Awakening Wonders. Thank you for joining me on what I call my side channel, Awakening. Here we focus a little more on mental health, well-being, and techniques that will alter your inner life so you can deal with reality. What could be more important than that? You're a person, you're here, you're gonna have to have relationships with other people. One day we know that we will die and everyone we love will die. Shall we develop some techniques to make those facts a little more bearable? Do you meditate already? If you don't, there are videos on Awakening that show you simple, easy meditation techniques that will enrich and change your lives. If you want to subscribe to my podcast on Luminary, I do a weekly meditation there. But let's just stay here for now. Let's have a little chat about one of the pervasive issues of our age, social anxiety. I was going on a Peppa Pig bus tour and one of our friends was going to come didn't come because of social anxiety. It's someone I really, really love. I thought, oh God, that's a real thing, that social anxiety. Now, I don't know about you. Social anxiety, that's been part of my life for as long as I've had a life. Like, I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to go to play group. I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to go out. I don't want to leave the house. And much of it is because of social anxiety. You know, if you see a film like I Am Legend, where Will Smith's on his own and looking at recent events, perhaps Will Smith needs a little bit of space. You see what happens when other people rile him up. Like... I sometimes think, yeah, I'd be all right in this world on my own. And even on said Peppa Pig bus tour, one of the things that was causing me a bit of anxiety is we were going with loads of friends and people we know. And I think, all right, you're going to be with other people. How are you going to deal with it? What does that suggest to you, social anxiety? What is it that causes you to be anxious about meeting other people? Let's have a little look more deeply. It's a self-esteem issue, isn't it? So you don't think that you're good enough. You think other people are going to judge you. You think you're going to be confronted with some aspect of yourself through relationship that you don't want to be confronted by. And in a way, it's a pretty sensible con consideration to have because, like, I don't know about you, but about once a week, someone will say something to me and I think, I can't fucking believe someone's actually saying this to me right now. Like, people are rude, aren't they? They'll just come out with some mad unconscious thing. The reason this side channel is called Awakening is because there ain't nothing better we can do with our little time here than awaken. And what I mean by awaken is become aware of our reality. What is happening right now? What am I feeling? What am I thinking? Why am I socially anxious? I've got some little details about social anxiety here. We do preparation, I don't just make this stuff up. Apparently, the National Institute for Mental Health estimates that 12% of American adults experience social anxiety disorder at some time in their lives. That number shot up during the pandemic. The CDC, that's the Centers for Disease and Control Prevention, we've been hearing a lot from them lately, have reported that 31% of US adults admitted to struggling with anxiety as of June 2020. Clinical psychologist Dr. Monica Vermani, the author of A Deeper Wellness, Conquering Stress, says, after living in a bubble, it feels awkward blending in again. Now, all right, so the pandemic might have been part of it, like feeling sort of sequestered, cut off, isolated in a bubble, alone. You know, one of the things people were talking about is what are the tangential consequences of some of the measures around the pandemic? What will the impact be on addiction and mental health? Well, these are areas. These are areas that I uh, operate within, as in I belong to support groups around addiction. I'm sure you've picked that up by now. And I have noticed anecdotally that addiction, alcoholism, mental health issues, self-harm, suicidal ideation has all increased. What this crisis brought to the forefront of our mind, I believe, is that we were somehow being medicated through our social systems and our systems of distraction. When you go out, when you're going to go out and be with people, there ain't nothing really more natural than that for a social animal. We evolved in tribes and groups. I feel that much of our mental health troubles, many of our dietary troubles, our social anxieties stem from us being out of alignment with the conditions we are evolved for. We are evolved to eat certain foods and to have scarce access to other foods. Now we have a lot of access to certain foods, sugar, fat. What is the impact of that? We are evolved to live in small communities where there is a shared purpose. If you haven't read Sebastian Junger's book, Tribe, where he talks about the advantages many military personnel feel during their service as a result of being part of a battalion with a shared purpose, you should look at it. It ain't advocating for military action. It's suggesting that we are evolved to have anthropological ties that align with a common and shared purpose, i.e., if we live together, as for hundreds of thousands of years, we apparently did, in small groups of people, looking after each other's children, finding food together, hunting food together, building shelter together, we would, 
we wouldn't have to construct ideas like patriotism. We wouldn't have to construct ideas like nationalism. We wouldn't need to conceive of ways to come together in congregation collegiately because it would be a necessity. It would be natural. It's our nature to be together. So when you find yourself in a position where the very idea of showing up on a Peppa Pig bus tour makes you feel anxious, as it did me and one of my mates to the point where she never came, something is awry. What is it? I was asked this by one of my great teachers early in our relationship when I was about to unpack the wagon and my psychosis, a tale I've told many times, this happened to me with my mum, this happened to my dad, this is my childhood's this, my childhood's that, my heart got broke, these things happened. He went, no, what is it? What is it? What is this thing that's been bothering you your whole life? What is it? What's been going on in there? What is it that this world is unable to address? What are you looking for, really? Well, from an anthropological perspective, leaning for a moment into the world of archetypes as relayed by Campbell and Jung, we might consider that it's a connection to the various aspects of our personal Mount Olympus, the gods and deities of war and love, our various unaddressed emotions. And that we need a connection to nature, our own nature, nature that we evolved in alignment with, that we are an expression of, the soil that we came from, the soil to which we will return, and the members of our community. Self, other, God. God, nature, for me, interchangeable. A, a limitless oneness, a place of non-separation. If you find yourself unable to be around people, I feel like we have to investigate what it is. Lack of trust, lack of self-esteem. Because these things can be addressed. This, I suppose, is what defines my life, is my belief in change. This belief in change comes from the program I have been taught around addiction and how to live free from chemical dependency and other forms of behavioural addiction one day at a time. The tools I was given are multi-applicable. They are their utility if not boundless, is certainly wide and varied. How I deal with my own social anxiety is I acknowledge that I feel a whole bunch of stuff and often if I'm willing to go through with the things I'm afraid of, things aren't as bad as I thought. Sometimes they bloody well are though. Sometimes I go to a thing that I'm socially anxious about and think, oh God, I hated that wedding and then people are so bloody rude and I was the groom. No, I mean like, you know, sometimes it don't always pan out, does it? But if we are awake, if we are aware, if instead of being a victim to our thoughts, as Muji says, do not combine, do not combine with your thoughts, try and observe them. If we can observe our feelings, perhaps we will become more aware of what we're actually being invited to do. So the next time you're invited to do something and you don't want to do it, you don't want to go, the next time you feel yourself feeling inferior or afraid, take a moment to observe it. Don't immediately react. Certainly don't label it and push it down. Watch it. What is it you are being invited to do? What is the invitation here? There are tools available to you. There are 12 step groups that exist around almost every conceivable issue. What I want to leave you with most of all, if you are a person that suffers from social anxiety, is on some level, most people feel this stuff. I've met some of the world's richest and most powerful people. I've been inside prisons and talked to super scary geezers that you would think would never know fear and they've revealed to me that they live in dread and horror. You don't know what other people are going through but you might presume that there is something universal that's happening to us here that perhaps at depth there is a oneness. This is a question, not a uh, conclusion. Perhaps there is a oneness, a place that we can all access that if you are willing to find that place, that witness, that seat of sovereignty within yourself and observe your thoughts and emotions you might be able to see the world not as separate from you but as reflections of you and you like me might be able to get on a Peppa Pig bus tour and have a perfectly reasonable time although there may be moments of anxiety particularly when seeing the sort of guy that was George who introduced himself as George when I saw him later and I'm pretty sure it's not his real name he wasn't wearing the hat no more when I saw him slumped in a corner I thought is this some dreadful metaphor for life a baby pig trapped in a mascot suit, unable to express himself. But if I had made that conclusion, I'd have been wrong because when I saw him a little bit later, he was actually very upbeat. Don't be afraid of one another. Don't be afraid of yourself. Don't be afraid of being alone. And don't be afraid of what happens when you're around other people because 
in truth and in fact we are all one part of the same living garment of an ever loving God and there is a way home for all of you but that's just what I think let me know what you think and let me know what other subjects you'd like to see me cover a tagged loneliness is an issue there what about heartbreak other aspects of anxiety depression what kind of subjects do you want to see me discuss let me know in the comments below please subscribe to our channel do you know that there's like loads of people that watch it that don't subscribe yet don't be one of those people subscribe to the channel let me know what subjects you want to see discussed give us a thumbs up if you want to join my mailing list and hear about unique events like the one day event I'm doing with the great Wim Hof subscribe there just click on that link if you enjoyed this video have a look at this one or this one stay with us join us on this journey know that you are beautiful stay free